Have you ever noticed that it is very difficult to unlearn something? Uh, especially if you realized that your whole life you have been uh, focused on living a certain way or thinking a certain way or believing a certain way and then <clears throat> you find out that there's something a little bit more accurate out there which meant that you're wrong in something and then you have to unlearn it and go with the newer thing. It's difficult, it's very difficult. And especially when the longer you have been wrong, the longer it takes to unlearn something. And so it's, it's on the difficult side. Ugh, spider whips. Anyhow, take for instance, the whole argument of being saved by grace through, uh, through faith. Um, there are those that cannot wrap their heads around that fact, and, uh, that, and they can't wrap their head around the fact that it's not what they do or don't do that gets them into heaven. It's who they know, or who, they, who, they, who and what they believe in more so than what they do and don't do. Anyway, a couple examples. Uh, Genesis, Genesis 15, 8. Uh, I'll read it here. It says, And he, Abraham, Abram at the time, believed in the Lord, and he, the Lord, uh, accounted to him for righteousness. And of course, um, that goes to show that it's it's the belief. It's not the do and the don't. It's the belief who Abram believed in. And that is what was righteousness. It wasn't what he did or didn't do. It was the fact that he believed the Lord and what the Lord had promised him. And that was accounted for righteousness. And also, I want to bring out the verse um, Acts sixteen thirty five uh, Acts sixteen thirty one. It says it's Paul talking to uh, the jailer in the in the uh, in the event, and he says to him, uh, "Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and all of your household." So once again, that belief gets translated back to the righteousness and that's what it's accounted to us for. So it's not what you do or don't do, it's who and what you believe in. So the problem is we hear it and we hear it a lot, we hear it many times, but we don't necessarily believe it. Or we tend to swing the pendulum too far the other way and say that you can do anything to anyone and you will still enter the kingdom. Uh, well, yes and no. If you're truly sorry for that which you have done, and repentant, and ask forgiveness and turn your heart from it, uh, that's basically what repentance means, uh, turning away from it and, you know, the whole forgiveness thing involved there, then yes, just like David and Bathsheba, David was forgiven for that because he was truly repentant. But that is a heart condition. But if you resist the Holy Spirit, uh, who is speaking and asking you uh, to not continue that which you are doing, uh, and you weary the Holy Spirit, then, of course, you will eventually lose out on your salvation continuing down that road, unfortunately. So what does that have to do with new school and old school and all that good stuff? Well, that was just a statement on how it can be difficult to learn, or more specifically, unlearn something that you've been taught for years. So now we're going to move on to the other thing and switch gears a little bit. 
and talk about the new and old wine oh, mosquito or spiders man anyway the new and old wine skins and this is a fairly famous uh parable that jesus had and jesus said if you put the new wine into the old wine skins you're going to they're going to burst and that's going to be the end of it you're not going to have any more and the wine in this parable is basically doctrine or teachings and new wine for new wine skins and of course the wine skin is basically our hearts and the new wine skin are the ones that are teachable and willing to learn something and more specifically to unlearn things so if you have a heart that is willing to learn new things and willing to unlearn a lot more then you'd be in the new wineskin category but if you refuse to move on from old teachings that have you know new verses have or new interpretations have come around to explain things better and you're stuck in the rut well in the rut you'll stay and specifically we like to think of it mostly old people or older people versus young people and that's not necessarily the case but to make that point or to use that as a jumping off point if you are an older person in the church and you've been in the church for quite some time chances are you were a young person in the church at one point and you probably believed a few things that uh, the older people of your generation did not agree with or called out heresy and now you might be that older person who is crying out heresy against some young upstart that you were just like a few years ago or many years ago depending on how old you are so i prefer personally like to think that and believe that it doesn't matter how old you are you can be a new wineskin just like nicodemus was eventually a new wineskin and joseph of arimathea uh, they were they were leery at first they weren't sure what to think and then they were convinced through um, what Jesus did and taught, and they came to accept him. So the whole point of this is that if you understand a certain interpretation, but then you later discover that there is an interpretation that is more accurate than you used to hold to, uh, then you should be able to uh, let go of the old one and let God teach you how to believe the new angle. It's not that the old was completely wrong. You may have just, it may, may have made sense at the time, but the Bible is an infinite well of truth and we are not that smart. And so as we go through life, we discover that we have to shed some things that we used to believe and I'd like to say that probably most of you have believed things differently as the years went by I know that I don't believe the same way that I believed a few years ago and if you most of my um, let's see, I was I was 27 I believe or 28 when I, I think it was 27 it's 2014 uh, I went to a, uh, a place called Arise in Oregon took some training there and that opened my mind up quite a bit to some things and before that I was um, I was working with a guy and we had radio headsets and we'd play sermons and all of a sudden I was learning a bunch of things that I didn't even know uh, existed or I was learning things that were contrary to the things that I thought I had learned when I was younger and it came to realize that some of the things that I was taught when I was younger were not true um, 
So I had one of two choices to make. Either go with what was true or stick with the old, uh, the old way. And I decided not to because when you have new evidence presented, you should probably go with the newer evidence. So anyway, Jesus knew how hard it would be for old wineskins to accept his teachings. And like I said, old doesn't mean that you're well advanced in age. You can just have a closed off heart to things. I know people that are relatively young and their heart is basically closed off to uh, anything outside of what they think that they believe in. And if you try to present them with evidence otherwise, they are closed off to that. Oh man, the spider webs. I need to get one of them sticks and start flipping it in front of me the whole way. Here's uh, where we're going, where we came from. It's a beautiful spot up here. Anyway, as I was going on, uh, Jesus knew how hard it would be for the old wineskins to accept his teachings. So he didn't take disciples from the well-educated, dyed-in-the-wool uh, Jews necessarily, the Pharisees, although some were very, very zealous. He took people that were teachable. As hard as they may have looked on the outside, Peter, you know, was pretty rough. And, uh, you know, the Sons of Thunder, as Jesus called two of the brothers. Uh, but they still had teachable hearts, even though it didn't appear so on the outside. So he took the ones that were teachable, and they had a lot to learn. And they had way more to unlearn. At one point, they asked Jesus if they should ask God to pour down fire from heaven and consume this, the, these people that uh, weren't all that welcoming. And Jesus basically, like, don't, be, don't be doing that. You don't know what's going on. And even when Jonah went to Nineveh and warned them, God, uh, God relented and didn't send that upon Nineveh and allowed them to live because he said these people don't know their right hand from their left hand and you need to you know they need to be taught these things anyway it's way hard and Jonah was really upset that God did not destroy them once you learn a way it's really hard to unlearn the way if you learn uh, if you believe that God is a God of fire and brimstone and he's just waiting around the corner to zap someone, you're not going to be very happy. Something scurrying. But if you let God teach you and lead you, well, you'll go from what you believe to what you believe to what you believe, and things will change, and you'll have a greater understanding, and you'll continue to grow. And I'm sure we're going to continue to grow for all eternity. So the final word on this all, before I uh, finish up and maybe roll some bee footage, is that um, pray diligently that you remain a new wineskin regardless of your age and be humble and teachable enough that Jesus can use you in his work. Anyhow, cue the other stuff.
cranberries. They have some flavor. I don't like them very often, but every once in a while it's nice to have that tart explosion.